Hey, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and today I'm going to be covering a pretty basic or core element of Pokemon MMO. I'm going to be trying to cover Pokemon MMO's UI today. For those who don't know, UI means user interface, which is basically all of the buttons and jingles all around the screen that you see. I'm going to try to, try, I'm going to, try to run through them all, explain what they do, how you can use them as tools to help you throughout your Pokemon MMO journey, and we'll get right into it. Okay, let's go ahead and start in the top left and then we'll work our way around. So in the top left, you can see pretty important information. So this is gonna be your location and your channel. So this is always gonna show your city or another specific location, like a route or something like that. And that can be really important because you can only find certain Pokemon in specific routes or areas. And sometimes you're confused whether you're in that route properly or not. And you can always check to the top left to make sure you're looking for the right Pokemon in the right spot. And then as you can see, I'm currently on channel two. And channels are basically like layers of a server, if that makes sense. And what that means is you're only going to see other players on channel two who are also on channel two. And it's to prevent server lag and overpopulation and other issues like that. And then under that information is going to be your Pokeyen. So as you can see right now, I have a little over one mil Pokeyen. And then under that is going to be time. The in-game time can actually be a super important thing, especially during certain hunts. You can only find certain Pokemon in certain areas during either the nighttime, the morning time, or the daytime. A good example being Oddish. So I want to shiny hunt shiny Oddish, but shiny Oddish only appears during nighttime and I believe in the morning in certain areas in Kanto and Hoenn. So I should only be hunting at those areas. At, during nighttime, and if I'm not, a different Pokemon will appear. So, for example, Bellsprout. So, it's important to keep track of the time if you're doing certain time sensitive events or certain time sensitive uh, hunts or anything like that. Other than that, it shouldn't matter too much. Although, time does also decide whether your Eevee will evolve into Umbreon or Espeon. So, I, that's a pretty huge one for a ton of players. So, don't, don't forget that and make sure you check your time. Don't accidentally evolve your Eevee into the wrong evolution. I've done that. It sucks. Okay, and then moving to the right of that information is going to be your hotkey bar. So the hotkey bar is one of my favorite and underrated tools of Pokemon Mo. You can go ahead and throw any sort of item or any sort of move or HM onto the hotkey bar. You can also rebind your hotkey bar within your settings. So for example, you can make them, I think, I think by default they're all F keys. So F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, etc, etc. But then I went ahead and changed them to number keys. And then I changed this last one to the, the F key. I heavily recommend changing them to whatever is more comfortable for you. Go ahead and change them to whatever keys that you feel comfortable with. But you can re re you can bind a ton of things to these keys. So you can bind things like the fishing rod. So you can just press F instead of having to go through all your items every time to do that. It's basically like in the normal games, you can have that one bound item, I believe. You can like bind it to like select or whatever on Game Boy. In Pokemon Mo, you can have up to nine, I believe, bound hotkey items. So a huge upgrade, very nice, very convenient, helps a ton. As a quick example, my hotkey bar is filled with my bike at the one slot, fly at the two slot, sweet scent at the three spot, teleport at the four spot, dig at F1, Lepa Berries at F2, and then Super Rod at F. And then I'll sometimes replace old rod over the super rod depending on what I, what i'm fishing for to bind an item to the hotkey bar you simply just have to go ahead and drag it onto the bar and then drag it off super simple to bind a move to the hotkey bar is a bit different you're going to want to go to the pokemon that has the move you want to bind and any move that can be bound is going to have a star next to it so as you can see sweet scent has this white star you can go ahead and pop this up i'm going to rebind it to slot three which is already what i have but Go ahead and click that star and that's how you bind a move. All right, and now onto this quick number in the top right. This is basically just your FPS from what I understand. So this is just gonna show your frames per second and your performance. As you can see, I'm getting around 132 FPS right now. Not a super important thing to know about the UI, but just kind of shows your performance of your computer hardware in relation to the game. All right, so now we're gonna come down to the Pokemon Party Bar, and you can do a lot of things with this. So first of all, you can obviously right-click 
all of your Pokemon. Go ahead and see the summary of all of them. That's obviously super helpful. You can also left click them and get this little menu where you can either view their Pokedex, move them within the party, uh, use any HMs they have, make them your follower. You can also do any of these options or any of these commands with other methods or other ways. So you can just drag the Pokemon onto the screen. If you want it to be your follower, I find that to be a lot easier. You can bind the moves for certain moves or HMs. You can super simply just drag Pokemon in your party to move them around instead of having to click move up or move to front. I find that a ton easier. Just go ahead and drag them. And then some other important things you can do with your Pokemon party bar is that you can move it wherever you want on the screen. So if you press this button with like the arrows facing outwards, it's going to give you this border around your Pokemon party. And that's going to let you drag it wherever you want on the screen. So I usually keep mine to the right side over here, but you can you can you, know, you can put it wherever you want. You can put it here if you want in the middle of the screen if you really want down here, up here. You can also flip it sideways. So if you click this button to the left of that, there's only two buttons there. It's going to flip it sideways. So if you want to, you can go ahead and put your Pokémon party up here next to your hotkey bar and kind of just have a solid you know, line up there. I think some people like that, which I understand. I think it's pretty nice, pretty aesthetic. Looks pretty cool up there, you know? But this is just a great example of how much customization there is to the Pokemon Mo UI that I think a lot of players either don't notice or just goes unchecked. I think it's very important to customize this game to whatever is, you know, more comfortable for you and make it a lot more fun for you in the long run. All right, now moving down to the bottom right. This is going to be the main chunk of the UI, there's going to be a ton of information here and a ton of things that open up other screens. Okay, right, first things first, let's cover the bag. Pretty simple, pretty normal compared to the other Pokemon games, although you do have a couple different like subsections, like just normal, all the items, uh, medicine, battle items, key items, Pokeballs, TMs and HMs, berries, and then cosmetics. This is also a very interesting tab. I think just the most important thing to keep in mind about the bag item is that you can search in the bag, which is the best tool. So you can go ahead and search for cookie and then, then lava cookie is going to come up. So make sure to search for whatever item you're looking, you're looking for, especially later game when you have a ton of items. It's going to save you a ton of time. Make sure you use that search bar function. Okay, then moving on to the next little menu icon there, it's going to be your trainer card, which is pretty simple, pretty similar to the to the original games, but there's going to be a lot more cool information here. So you're going to see your IGN up here, you're going to see the date at which you started playing, which I love to see for everyone, you're going to see your Pokedex entries, you're going to see your Pokeen, you're going to see your battle points, which is important. So battle points are points earned through PvP or through the battle tower, which you can then redeem for certain move tutors or PvP items like Choice Band, etc., etc. So battle points, this is the only place where you can see your battle points uh, currency and how much you have uh, instead of just going to Battle Tower to check. You're going to see your time played, which is always cool to flex and cool to see. And then you're going to see your max obedience. Max obedience is going to be a really important stat to check when doing any sort of playthrough in the storyline. Let's say you notice that your Pokemon stopped leveling past level 36. Uh, and you're like, well, you know, why did that happen? What the heck? And it's going to be because you don't have enough gym badges to actually allow them to level up further than that. And you're going to want to check your max obedience when you're doing the storyline to make sure you're not either overleveling over leveling your Pokemon or under leveling them. And then as, just, as I just mentioned, you're going to see all of the gym badges you have in the current region that you're in right at the bottom. Okay, and now on to a bit more of a complicated icon. They call it the community tab. I'd call it more of a social tab, but anyway, same thing. So you're going to have a couple options. Your friends list, your teams list, change channel, nearby players, which is an underrated feature, and then select followers. Select followers is pretty simple. You just select your follower in a different way. There's so many different ways to select your follower in this game. It's, it's a little funny. Let's go ahead and cover friends. So you're going to click friends. You're going to see your friends list. Uh, you can do a lot of things here. You can sort in a lot of ways. You can sort by alphabetical player name. You can sort by if they're online or not. You can sort by last online and kind of delete players that maybe you've had on your friends list for a super long time but haven't logged in since 2014. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Uh, you can see your oldest friends who's been the most loyal to you over the years and who's you know who you're still hanging out with over so many years is always really cool to see. 
This is also where you're going to go to add friends. I think this is the best place to go to add friends. You're going to click in this chat box and then type in whatever the person's name that you're trying to add and then click add friend and they're going to have to be online and also not busy to accept your friend request. This is one of my biggest complaints about PokeMMO. I really wish they had more of a like mail system to the to the friend request instead of it being you need to be online and unbusy. Bit of a huge requirement in an MMO setting, especially when you're trying to connect with other players. There is also a search bar. I'm very happy PokeMMO devs seem to love search bars because I love them as well. So you can go ahead and search a certain thing and find a different, you know, find all the friends you want to with that search bar. I highly recommend it. Search bar is one of my favorite features in anything. Very helpful. Your friends list is also going to have your blocked list over here on the right side. You can go ahead and see, you know, who have you blocked, what date you blocked them. Not super important, but you can also use it to right click them and unblock anyone that maybe you don't really need to block anymore or maybe you know don't deserve it etc etc you can also block people through this screen although you can just right click their name and chat and block them that's usually the best way but you could type you know someone's name and then the block reason and then go ahead and click block Quick note that you also can sort your friends list by online only, so it'll only show your online friends, which can be super helpful during some searches, or super helpful just to see like, hey, what's up, like who's online, who can I hang out with. Okay, but moving on from the friends tab, let's go ahead and check the team tab. So a team in PokeMMO is the same thing as a clan or a guild in most other MMOs. I honestly prefer calling it a clan or a guild, specifically, I like, I'm a huge fan of guild as a name, but it's called Team in Pokemon Mo, so I do kind of try to stick to that. Uh, but you're going to have a couple main tabs within the team window. You're going to have information, which is just basically just whatever your team wants to put here, they can. It's just basic information. Usually people will put like their forum page, their Discord, and then some sort of welcome message or some sort of competition there. This is also the page where you're going to be able to invite players. So you're going to go ahead and type in someone's name and then go ahead and invite them to the team. You can also leave your team if you really want to. It can't, Honestly, it's, I've had trouble in the past finding the leave team option back when I was very new to the game. So I think it's important to know where this is at if you need it. All right, and then moving from information to roster. It's going to be exactly like your friends list, but it's just going to be every person within your team. And they're also going to have a rank. The most important thing to, that's different in this menu is then your friends menu is going to be the rank. You can kind of see who is, you know, what rank and who has what powers. And we'll go ahead and get into what powers each rank has in the permissions tab. So on to the permissions tab. Permissions, these are similar to like Discord permissions if you're ever used to that. But there's going to be certain roles that each player is going to be assigned. And each role is going to have a specific power. So as you can see, Monkeys and staffs can't do anything in this team. I actually didn't realize monkey was a role in my team until just now. That's hilarious. Manager is only able to invite. And then director, executive, captain can do everything, but might have different roles within the team's discord or might have other specific meanings. It's very important if you run a team to make sure your permissions are correct. You never want to give someone permission to kick or, you know, kick members or change the team message if you don't want them to. Make sure you don't make that mistake as it could turn everything into a mess and cause some real havoc. All right, but that's it for the team page. Let's go ahead and check the change channel little screen. So as I was explaining earlier, channels are basically layers of a server where you can only see certain parts of the population of the current, you know, online player base. But there's a couple of things that we can do here. We can go ahead and change our channel, but we can only do that as every like certain amount of times you can only change your channel every two minutes and that's just to prevent like over flooding the server just by simply spam changing your channel that would be a lot of feedback and super annoying for the servers you can set your preferred channel which is basically what channel you want to always preferably log into let's say you're in a team and everyone in that team kind of always plays on channel three you can then switch to channel three and then set channel three as your preferred server so that every time you're like you know kind of around your your team you're kind of around that area and you're more socializing with them and in in, you know within that channel which I think is a cool thing to do I really like kind of setting a team channel I think it's really cool and it adds a lot of personality and a lot of personalization to that team and that the way you socialize within that team 
But that's basically it for channels, and let's. Do, the only thing left in this tab is nearby players. But if I click it here, you're gonna see that there's no nearby players. So I'm actually gonna have to travel to a different location to show you guys how to use this tool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and head to this a bit more populated area. But as you can see, there are only like two or three players around here. But if I go ahead and hit nearby players, it's gonna give me each of their names. And the reason this is helpful is because sometimes during certain events, or especially at like catch events. There's going to be so many names and so many players on top of each other that it can be really, really difficult to kind of find the person you're looking for and either whisper them or add them to, as a friend or trade them, invite them to a link or do whatever you want to do, right? Uh, it can be really, it can be really like frustrating. And this kind of just gives you a clear option to check all nearby players and then do whatever option you want to do with them. It just makes things more clear and more concise. I really like having that option. I think it's a very nice tool to have. All right, and now moving on to the Master Ball, which is the PvP icon. There's actually a ton of information to cover within this, a deceptive amount of information. So let's go ahead and get into matchmaking signup. So the matchmaking signup screen is, of course, going to have matchmaking signup, but it's also going to have a ton of other information. So it's going to have your personal stats for each tier and each rank of PvP. It's going to let you queue into battle, of course, queue into those PvP games. You're going to be able to check the leaderboards and see people's win-loss ratios, win percentage, their rating, and their elo. There is tons and tons of information within this tab. And if you're trying to get into PvP, I heavily recommend just opening this up and just browsing around and just seeing what you can find out. And just taking in that information, taking in those statistics, and learning as much as you possibly can. You can also spectate games, which is a beautiful feature, so you can go ahead and learn from some of the highest ranked players. Go ahead and watch their play, see what teams they're running, see what they do in certain situations, and really learn from them. And then my personal favorite tab in this is going to be the statistics tab. I love this. So you can go ahead and see all of the usage percentages for every Pokemon in every tier, and then the win percent that they have. So as you can see, Garchomp is currently sitting at 42% usage. That means almost every other game you're going to see a Garchomp, which is pretty insane, uh, pretty crazy. And then you can you can really learn from that. And this, this is one of the best tools in the game. I absolutely love this. They have it for every tier. They have it for, you can sort by month. You can see in the past what was being played. Uh, what things have changed over the past couple of months and how, how the meta has evolved. I'm a big fan of NU, so I'm, I'm in the NU tab here a lot, kind of checking what the most, you know, what the most played Pokemon is, how decent are the win rates, you know, what counters do I need on my team to counter the meta, what meta Pokemon do I want to run, etc., etc. This is chocked full information. You can scroll forever. You can go to next pages. You can see the least used Pokemon in the tier. So we can go ahead and see a Bulbasaur was used in NU at one point. We can see a Cherum, you know, whatever you want to see, a Machoke. It is, it is an underrated tool that the fact that the Pokemon Mode devs give us this much information in one tab is so brutally underrated, and I heavily, heavily, heavily recommend it. If you're trying to get into PvP, or if you play PvP, you got to learn to live in this tab. It is so, so helpful, and it'll be a crucial part of your PvP journey in Pokemon Mode. Okay, and now on to the clauses sections of the PvP matchmaking sign-up. So, clauses are basically rules in effect that limit or change the Pokemon Mode PvP or Pokemon PvP in general for a competitive scene. And these are all pretty standard. I think sh Pokemon Showdown and any sort of Pokemon like cartridge PvP battling will also have these uh, same rules. So these are pretty standard. These aren't different as opposed to the, the normal games as far as I understand. But go ahead and check these out. If you're new to PvP or have never heard of something like the Evasion Clause, the Sleep Clause, the OKO Clause, or the Unique Species Clause, go ahead and go to this page and read up on them. I recommend it. And then there's also the Bans page. There are currently no bans in place, but sometimes uh, certain things get banned, uh, whether it's a move set or one move on a specific Pokemon or just a specific Pokemon getting banned. This is the place where you'll see them, so it's still important to know.
And then there's the help section of the PvP matchmaking sign-up screen, and honestly, this answers a ton of frequently asked questions or common questions you'll see from people getting into PvP, or even people who have been playing PvP for a while but didn't really like bother to read this. I definitely heavily, heavily recommend if you play PvP at all in this game, come ahead, go ahead, come to this, and quickly read through each of this or all of these. It's really helpful, really important, just gives you some more information, all super useful information as well. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the tournament sign-up, which is, in a way, somewhat similar to the matchmaking sign-up, although tournaments are different in the sense that they are rarer, they're more, they're more uh, refined, they're more competitive, they're less casual, is the word I'm looking for, less casual, they're more serious, uh, there's around one tournament per tier every three days or so so right now there is an ou tournament running is what is what this is telling me currently i can, i'm not in this tournament so i can't register but there's currently an ou tournament you know active right now and there's a uu tournament in 17 hours it is important if you like pvp and want to enter in these tournaments there's some really nice prizes it's really important to check uh, the, check this every day or every so often and just see what events are coming up. That's honestly probably your best use of the tournament sign-up screen is just to check what events are coming up and make sure you're aware of them and you're on time to register with them and have your, you know, your right party active. You can also have your battle boxes be your party for this, but that's a bit more complicated. That's kind of a, a section within your Pokemon Mo PC screen, and you'll that's a, that's, it, that's a whole other video on its own. But TLDR, you just use this to sign up for official, more organized events, and then clauses in the bans page on this are the exact same as the PvP matchmaking. The difference being the help screen is a bit different, and this will kind of give you some more information that you really might not know or might not be aware of. So something like high elo players can be prioritized. That's something that, like I feel like a lot of players don't know or at least aren't aware of. Um, if you're if you play a lot of ranked in, P in Pokemon Mo, you'll kind of get that reward of being slightly prioritized during tournament sign up, which I kind of honestly like. I think it rewards players who put in that time, rewards players who put in that hard work, and I I, I respect that. I'm okay with that. I like that rule. But to find out other rules like that, go ahead and check out the help screen within the tournament sign up page. Okay, and now on to the last PvP relevant tab, but it's a huge tab, chocked full of information. So Let's go ahead and get into the Tournaments tab. So the Tournaments tab is going to do two things, mostly. It's going to show you current tournaments that are upcoming and or ongoing, like that OU tournament. So you can go ahead and plan for them ahead of time. Like So maybe I'll plan for this NU tournament. And they're also going to show you a ton of information when you click on that tournament. So we're going to click on Lamprey Lamp. And it's going to bring us to the tournament name, the tournament format, how many players, the tier, whether it's single or so much information, right? So you can go to this tab. You can also see the bracket. And I'll show you guys a past tournament that has ended to show you a better example of the bracket. You can see the prize here. So the prize for this one is going to be a shiny gift Electros. A lot of shiny gift Pokemon are given in PvP events which is pretty damn cool. So there is there is a ton of information. So other info, like you can see 16 players are prioritized if you're high rank. There is oh, so much information within these tabs, probably some of the most underused information within Pokemon Mo for sure. And I just heavily, heavily recommend, that out, recommend it. If you play any sort of ranked PvP or any sort of PvP in Pokemon Mo, check this page out. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a past tournament, which is gonna have a lot of the same information, but you can go ahead and see the bracket. It's gonna show you who played who, who the winner was. You can go ahead and spectate that match if you want to, which I think is incredible. The fact that they save all of the matches to spectate in the future, that is that is that is not easy to do. There is a lot, a ton of a ton of work and a ton of effort has went into this from the Pokemon Mode devs to have all these automated tournaments, have all these, you know, all these pages, have all this information, to have all these recorded battles. It is it is shocking the amount of effort that went into this. I think it's very beautiful and very underappreciated and underrated. 
but then if you just scroll down to the bottom, you can you know you can see like round one, round two, round three, round four, semifinals, and then round six, which is the finals. You can go ahead and see who won the tournament. You can go ahead and watch the winners, like you know the final match. Like how cool is that? You can go ahead and skip to it, watch the final match. Super super underrated stuff. Super, super helpful for learning NU, learning the meta, if you want to plan to enter a tournament in the future. Seeing how these play- tournaments played out and who won and why they won was is going to do a huge... It's going to help you try to win that next tournament, you know? So, pretty beautiful stuff. Heavily recommend it. Go ahead and check it out if you play PvP. All right, and now finally moving on from PvP, we're going to be moving on to some more general information that's going to help all types of players. The Pokédex. The Pokedex is going to be chocked full of information for casual players, for PvP players, for PvMers, for shiny hunters. Every type of player is going to be coming to the Pokedex over and over and over again to check certain information. It's probably the most used tab and the most used tool that I use in this game personally. Heavily recommended. Everyone's got to use it. So much information. Let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and start at the top left. You can sort per, you know, per Pokedex, per region, for Kanto, for Hoenn, for Sinnoh, for Unova, if you only want to see you know, what Pokemon you can catch in certain regions, but I definitely recommend always doing national decks. It's all I ever really use, it's all I ever really need. It's, it's simple as that. We can also check in the top right. This is one of the most useful tools for getting into PvP or current PvP players making a team. It's just beautiful PvP. So this is going to be sorting by tiers. So you can go ahead and scroll through all of the tiers and go ahead and just immediately see in-game what Pokemon are in what tiers. I love this. This wasn't in the game for a very long time, and it was very annoying to go to the forums and check what Pokemon were in what tier every time you wanted to build a new comp or build a new team or create a new comp Pokemon. But now we can just go here and just check and it's just beautiful it shows you like how, what the meta it really gives you a nice overview of the meta at the same time because all of the tiers are decided by percentage usage so it's it's the most helpful tool in the game for pvp at a very core or basic level now let's go ahead and click on a specific pokemon and get into some more specifics our example pokemon is going to be bulbasaur you can go ahead and check the pokemon's typing you can check its height and weight, which don't matter too much, although its white weight might matter for certain moves in competitive, like Heavy Slam. Uh, you can check what held items it might have on it. So basically what that means is when you catch that Pokemon in the wild, it has a chance of holding one of those items on it. So you can kind of farm for items like that. It's going to sh- list the two, uh, one or two different abilities the Pokemon can have. That can be super useful because certain Pokemon can't learn certain abilities in Pokemon Mo, or at least hidden abilities are in the game. So it's really important to go ahead and check before you make a com- competitive Pokemon whether that Pokemon has the ability that you're hoping it has. So a really good example is Zangoose doesn't have uh, the speed boost ability where if he's poisoned, he's going to get that speed boost. So Toxic Orb isn't as useful on Tank on Zangoose in this game. That's a really important thing to note. You can go ahead and check the egg group. Egg group is so crucial. I check this all the time. Egg group is checking what a Pokemon's egg group is. Super crucial, mandatory for breeding. Breeding is going to be used by casual players for fun, going to be used by competitive players, going to be used by shiny hunters. Every type of player is going to be needing to check certain Pokemon's egg groups over and over and over again. You're always going to forget. So it's important to be able to navigate the Pokedex and go ahead and check those egg groups. You're also going to be able to see the EV yield. So what this means is every time you kill a Pokemon of this type in the wild, this is the EV yield that which your Pokemon that killed it is going to gain. And this is kind of how people go about figuring out EV training spots. They find Pokemon with either plus two or plus three EV yields in a specific spot and then go to that spot. And then if it's 100% chance for that EV yield, that's an important factor, etc., etc. So the EV yield is important. You don't want to put, you want to kill a Pokemon and get the wrong EVs for a Pokemon you're trying to EV train properly. And then you're also going to go ahead and see the PvP tier that which the Pokemon's in. Bulbasaur is obviously an unevolved, very weak Pokemon, so it's going to be an untiered. Although something like Venusaur is going to be a never used. Something like Blastoise is going to be an underused. And something like Charizard is actually going to be untiered, which might shock a lot of non-competitive players. Okay, but there's still a ton of information within a specific Pokemon's 
uh, stat page within the Pokedex that we're going to cover because I use these all the time. There's still, you know, just a ton to cover. So let's go ahead and get into the next tab within a specific Pokemon's page, which is going to be their moves. So this is going to show you all of a Pokemon's moves that they can possibly learn. Now this is really important. I'm going to go ahead and cover quickly. I believe I might do a short video on this at some point though, but I'm going to go ahead and quickly cover in this video what, you know, what moves what. So start means that the Pokemon just begins with that move, you know, not a big deal. All the levels show what level the Pokemon would learn that move at. TM means that the Pokemon can learn that move through a TM. And then tutor means that Pokemon will learn that move through a move tutor, which are certain NPCs, which you can find at every PC in the game, but certain regions require, or certain moves require you interacting with that NPC at a certain region, and there are guides on that on the forums, but that's not what this video is about. There's also egg moves, so this is the most important one. You're going to need to check what egg moves a Pokemon learns for certain Pokemon. Certain Pokemon need certain egg moves to be competitively viable. They're just so important, so crucial to that Pokemon, uh, and they really help the power of that Pokemon so much that it is really, really important. Not not 100% required, but just 100% preferable and recommended. A really good example of this would be Mach Punch for Conkeldur is maybe the best egg move example where Mach Punch is a priority fighting type move on a very strong but very slow Pokemon. So this is a great example of checking for using the Pokedex to check for egg moves about what what might be really important on a Pokemon and what you might need to be aware of when making that sort of comp. Always, whenever you want to make a comp, a competitive Pokemon of a certain Pokemon, check its moveset, check its base stats, check every little piece of information within these summary pages. Whew, okay, that covers moves. Let's go ahead and cover base stats. So for those who don't know, base stats are assigned to each different species of Pokemon. So Bulbasaur has different base stats than Ivasaur. Ivasaur has different base stats than Venusaur. Venusaur has different base stats than Charizard, than Blastoise, etc., etc. Every single species of Pokemon has a different set of base stats. And base stats are kind of, you know, the base stats. They're what your starting point is from that Pokemon, and base stats will often decide how you're going to use that Pokemon within competitive play because they are so important on how that Pokemon is going to function. A quick example of this would be looking at Sand Slash's base stat and trying to figure out what this Pokemon would be good at and what this Pokemon does. So this Pokemon has 100 base attack, a really good base defense, decent base HP, below average to bad special defense, and then uh, uh, kind of bad speed. Uh, what you do see is that it has a horrible 45 special attack. So you would never put any sort of special moves like Fire Blast on a Sand on a sand Slash. Uh, and having a 100 base attack means you're definitely going to be wanting to be a physical attacker and never be a special attacker. Uh, except for maybe some extreme niche circumstances. But this is just a quick example of showing you that Sand Slash would be a good example of a bulky, uh, kind of slow, but tanky physical attacker. And you can kind of decipher that or discover that just by looking at the base stats of the Pokemon. Okay, moving on from base stats, let's go ahead and cover wild locations. So wild locations, there could be one like there is for this Bulbasaur, or there could be 30 like there is for something like Oddish or some sort of other more common Pokemon like Bellsprout. Um, and there's going to be a, a bit of information here. So wild locations is just going to show you where this Pokemon can be caught in the wild, obviously. So it's going to show you where you can catch it. So for example, it could say grass. It could say Super Rod, which means you need to fish for it. It could say Surf. It could say Dark Grass, which means you're obviously going to be, need to be looking for Dark Grass. Uh, it's important to check that and make sure you're looking for that Pokemon in the right area. It's going to say the region. It's going to say the location, which is usually a route or some sort of lake or other specific location. Dragon Spiral Tower is one. Uh, it's going to show what level range or a specific level that Pokemon is going to be caught at in the wild. So Bulbasaur is always going to be level 10 when you encounter it in the wild. And then it's going to show the rarity. Okay, so rarity is a bit complicated in Pokemon Mo of how much you're going to encounter that spawn. Um, I don't actually know the specific numbers, and I couldn't find the specific numbers anywhere. But if I were to take a guess, this is a blind guess, and this is a big average, I would guess that common means you're going to encounter that Pokemon around 50% of the time. 
Uncommon means you're going to encounter that Pokemon around 20 to 30% of the time. Rare means you're going to encounter that Pokemon around 5% of the time. And then very rare is usually a 1% or 0.5% encounter. This is all community word of mouth information and what I've come to understand over the years. I don't know if there are specific destined rates. Um, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them on the forums. I've, I've searched for them extensively. Uh, but if you do know them, please leave them in the comments. I haven't found them for Pokemon Mo specifically. But that's that's all. It's all. It's all to know for wild locations. Let's go ahead and move on to the evolution tree. So the evolution tree is pretty useful for you know evolving Pokemon. You're gonna see what level the Pokemon evolves at, if it needs any sort of stone, if it needs any sort of specific requirement like leveling next to a honey tree or leveling next to a certain rock or needing some sort of certain item, Firestone, Thunderstone, upgrade for Porygon, etc., etc. All of that sort of information is going to be listed in the evolution tree. A really good example is going to be Eevee, of course, since there are so many evolutions. We can go to the evolution tree, we can see all the different types. We can see Happiness Daytime, Happiness Nighttime, that's how you get Espeon and Umbreon, level near Mossy Rock, level near Icy Rock, etc., etc., ton of information on the evolution tree it's going to help you evolve any pokemon you want to evolve okay now moving on to the global trade link or what players will often call it as the gtl so i actually have a video explaining a lot more about the gtl or more specifically how to sell in price and value your pokemon or how to buy pokemon of, a, of the right value which i will link in the description of this video if you're interested go ahead and check that out but the GTL is basically a huge trade house, or if you've ever played RuneScape, Grand Exchange, that's going to have a ton of Pokemon listings, a ton of item listings, you can see your listings, you can create a listing. It's going to be the main place where you're going to go to trade, buy, and sell all of your Pokemon desires. This game is an MMO, so making sure you trade with players and using the global trade link effectively is super crucial and a huge, huge part of the game, so understanding its UI is pretty important. I'm going to do my best, but I do have a video covering it already, so I'm also going to do a quick stim. So here you're going to see all the Pokemon listings. You can sort through them by newest listing, oldest listing, lowest price, highest price. The most common that I use are newest and lowest price. Those are probably the, the most common uh, kind of sorts you can do for Pokemon and there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of pages of Pokemon here So how do you you know go ahead and refine that number? How do you go ahead and make it easier to search for the Pokemon you're looking for? You're gonna to want to click advanced search So this is gonna come up with a ton of information and this is gonna be a beautiful way of Searching for a specific Pokemon you either want to buy or learning how to price Pokemon that you want to sell so there's a ton of options here to search for. You can, you know, go ahead and put a price margin. You can, you know, search for a specific gender, search for whether it's shiny or not, search for an egg group, search for particles, which are kind of an entryway effect. Those can be another video of its own, honestly. Uh, nature is, you know, another thing to search for. You can search for, like, specifically just OU Pokemon. You can do things like search OU and then search minimum level 50, which is basically only going to show you comps for the most part. Oh, they're gonna have to go through some of the lowest some of the lower priced ones but you're basically gonna find some that'll end up being EV trained go ahead and sort by newest that might be better so here we can kind of see a salamance that has some decent IVs and you know an OU level 50 Pokemon you can see this Conkeldur it's gonna have some IVs but missing a ton elsewhere but yeah you can, you can do a ton of things search for a ton of Pokemon in specific ways you can search for specific IVs so we can search for 31 speed so every Pokemon with a 31 speed IV is going to come up here. We can sort by lowest price and find the cheapest 31 speed Pokemon. There is an absolute ton of things, a ton of specific specified ways you can search for Pokemon. And advanced search is your most important tool within the GTL. All right, now let's head over to the item list. So the item list is going to have all the items you need, any sort of TMs, any sort of vanity or, you know, cosmetic items. It's going to have important items like green shards or mushrooms to relearn moves. It's also going to have things like donator statuses to, you know, get that sort of gift shop or RP value. The, the advanced search for items is a lot nicer and a lot easier thankfully there's way less to search for with items although usually when you're searching for an item in pokemon go pokemon Mo, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the search bar and just type 
whatever you're looking for so items are pretty simple at least a lot more simple than pokemon go ahead and go to the search bar search for whatever you're looking for sort by lowest price and get a good price on that item so easy peasy and then this little arrow right here if you ever see this is just the refresh bar you can go ahead and click that whenever you want and then this is going to be to clear your advanced filters so let's go ahead i set the price to 5k minimum it's going to have that at first but then if i clear this it's going to get rid of that feature so those are two important little ui notes to know about it's also important to note in the gtl that the amount in the in, in the price are important to understand that whenever you so if you see two choice bands listed for 128k the price is per item it's not 128k for two choice bands it's 128k per choice band and that's something that's important to know and different games kind of do that in different ways so it's important to know how pokemon mode does theirs let's go ahead and move on to your listings so this is going to where you're going to see any sort of listing that you put up that you create in the create listing fees we're going to, have to go to a pc to show you guys that properly you can't uh, list things on the GTL if you're not at a PC, but you can buy things and they will be sent to your mailbox, but they won't be delivered directly to you. But you can go ahead and check your listings. You can see, you know, what you're selling, whether it's a Pokemon or an item. You can go ahead and click on them and see how good they are, see why you priced them at that. You can see whether it's sold or not. If it's sold, it'll say zero here. Um, but if there are certain like things like items that might say like 34 here and then it'll be like maybe you have like 29 sold So you still have some unsold um, You're gonna see the price you're gonna see if you if it, if it is sold You're gonna see an unclaimed amount of Pokemon that you have to claim you can go ahead and cl you can click Claim on each of your sold things to go ahead and claim the Pokemon you've gained you can click claim all to go ahead and claim it you can claim all one page at a time so let's say all of this sold and then all of this sold down to like here you would click claim all but then that half page would now show up over here so you have to click claim all a couple of times sometimes if you have multiple pages of sold goods you can also go ahead and cancel any sort of listing fee but that will negate it'll get rid of your listing fee so you won't get your listing fee back if you cancel a listing that's important to know all right, now I'm going to head to a PC and show you guys how to create a listing and kind of what that UI looks like. So we're going to go to GTL. We're going to go to create listing. So you can see you can either list an item or you can list a Pokemon. Let's go ahead and throw this Abra up here. We can go ahead and change the price to whatever we want. List that Abra for whatever we want. It's going to give us a listing fee. And that listing fee is going to be, you know, the cost that it is to list something. They have It kind of is like a tax basically that kind of sucks Pokeon out of the game, keeping the economy stable and being a good Pokeon sink for the game is what they call it in MMOs usually, usually sort of a currency sink. And then you can either click sell or clear to go ahead and do whatever you want. I'm gonna hit clear because I obviously don't wanna sell that Abra. Uh, do whatever you wanna do for your listing. And then whenever you make a listing here, it will always pop up over here. But I believe that's the entire GTL covered, so next we'll be getting on to mail. Alright, so mail is mostly pretty simple. It works the same way mail works, IRL or any other sort of MMO. So you're going to go ahead and check your mail. You can check your mail within any sort of PC. You're going to have some sort of thing like this. Like, so this is like an old matchmaking thing. I can go ahead and delete that. Uh, you're going to have things like this, like a happy birthday message, like stuff like that. Uh, like joke memes, uh, you know, like sometimes people will send you dumb things like a copy post skeleton, you know, mails for mails for all sorts of stuff. Uh, so you can go ahead and check your past mail here. You can either mail Pokemon or mail Poke Yen or items to other players. You can send stupid little messages. You can send important, crucial messages. Mail works the same way it does in most other games. You can go ahead and drag Pokemon in there. You can go ahead and drag items in there. And then just you select how many of an item you can just mail whatever you want to whatever player you want and then go ahead and click send and or clear pretty simple Alrighty, moving on to the gift shop i'm happy if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much the gift shop is basically the game's in-game kind of you know real world money shop where you can go ahead and spend real world money or you know us dollars or whatever your currency is uh, to go ahead and get reward points and what clicking get more reward points is going to do is going to take you to their link their hyperlink to their site you can go ahead and enter your credit card information whatever you want to do to go ahead and buy some rp rp is their you know their currency you can just buy a bunch of stuff here you can buy donator status which are items to increase certain things you can buy vanity items it's just a shop i don't want to spend too much time covering this 
Uh, I could do a, a video of its own just kind of covering the, the gift shop, but basically it's just a shop where you can spend real world money and then go through all of the options. Whatever you want to buy, go ahead and buy and enjoy. All of the money you spend does go to supporting the you know the small dev team and supporting servers and supporting the game that we love and care about so much. So if you do, and it is a free game, so if you do really love and enjoy this game, I do recommend go ahead and you know spending some money. You know if you want to give back to the game, uh, if you don't or can't or don't want to, fair enough. You know feel free, just do whatever makes you happy. Okay, moving on to the last absolute monster of the UI is going to be the menu settings. So there's going to be a ton of stuff here. Let's go ahead and cover it the best I can. So the first and easiest button is going to be party. Party is basically just going to select the first Pokemon in your party. So if I click that, I'll click party. So you want to basically select it. You can see it's like kind of highlighted. It's kind of hard to see, but do you see this like light height line highlight around my Abra? And if I press like W, it's going to go to the circuit and then back and forth, back and forth. Uh, basically, it just lets you, and you can click Z, which is like my A button, and go ahead and like do all the options from there. It basically just gives you another option or another way of kind of controlling your, your UI and controlling your menus. I've really never used this. It's not important. You don't need to know about it. I don't, I don't recommend it, but it's an, a nice thing to know about, I guess, if your like mouse is broken or something. Not sure, but not super important. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and cover settings last because that's the biggest beast of them all. And I'll try to, or maybe, I don't know, maybe I can just run over it quickly. I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and go from the bottom. So exit is going to go ahead and just close your game. Pretty simple stuff. Log out is going to log you out of your account. You can log into other accounts or other characters on that account. Support request is going to take you to a link. It's going to open your browser. It's going to take you to a ticket support request, which is basically if there's some sort of glitch or something really went wrong to where you lost something specific in the game, or maybe you're having like a very targeted sort of player harassment, you can go ahead and su support a, or submit a support ticket to the devs and to the game moderators. Instance info is something that I honestly don't use enough. It's only really useful if you're doing uh, Elite Four rebattles. And what instance info is going to show you is like what the cooldown is and whether you're ready to go and whether you can, you know, go ahead and go back and do your E4 rebattles. It's not going to show you how many times you've completed the Elite Four. I've literally only done the one each for the storyline. Although I used to do Kanto E4 rebattles back in the day for Pokien when that was a possible method, but they didn't track it back then. But it's not important. This is just, this is really only useful if you're doing uh, Elite Four rebattles. Other than that, not super important. Now on to a very important one, customization. So this is going to be where you're going to go to select all of your bunny ears and all of your, you know, your afros, all of your dumb stuff. However dumb you want your character to look, however cool, however edgy, however cute, whatever you want your character to look like, you want to go here and you know you can see the preview screen. You can make him run. You can make him bite. You can make him walk. You can see the the trainer card view of him. This is such a crucial part of the game you know having that style having that swag having that pizzazz whatever you want to look like you know pick your style that you like go ahead and jam it out enjoy have fun customize the hell out of your character and have fun just do not forget to click set outfit after you find the perfect outfit for your for your character there's been too many times where i've spent so long customizing and i just forget to click that and then i just exit out and then all of my changes are gone oh no Okay, well, let's go ahead and go to the FAQ. Honestly, the FAQ is very helpful and like really good. Uh, it's just basically going to answer any frequently asked questions. That's what FAQ means. So if you have any questions about the game before going to the Reddit or before going to you know YouTube or any sort of thing like that, I'd heavily recommend just checking the FAQ at least once. Once you know it's in the FAQ, you don't need to, you don't need to check it every time you have a question, but once you know the information that's in an FAQ, it's important to at least know it once and check it before, you know, asking any other sort of question on any sort of other third party uh, site or social media. Whew, okay, on to the monster, on to settings. So every video game, if you ever played a video game before, they all have settings. So this is pretty normal, pretty standard stuff. You're going to have video settings. You're going to have graphic settings. You're going to have sound settings. You're going to have interface settings. You're going to have gameplay settings. You're going to have control uh, language. You can kind of filter out what languages you see in chat. Let's, let's, see your, let's say your chat is being spammed by like a ton of languages that you can't even read and can't even understand. Like why would you, you know, some people don't want that. I understand. So you might, you can just go ahead and turn those off. 
and it makes your chat less spammy of like useless information that you can't have. You can find profanity filter in the chat. You can change your, your scroll back size, which is basically how far back you can see within the chat. So it's gonna be a ton of information here, a ton of stuff. You can turn these auto decline features off if you're getting spammed by random people. Uh, there's gonna be a bunch, ton of random information, ton of random settings you can go ahead and look through yourself there. I'm not gonna go through each setting specifically. I thought I was going to do that, but honestly, I'm not going to. I might maybe make a video of its own doing that, but there's so much to cover here. Uh, and I really don't want to do that in this video. This video is already much, much longer than I expected. I thought this video would be a lot, lot shorter, but I guess there is a ton more information about UI in this game than I realized. Okay, and then last thing, really quick, I'm going to cover the chat a little bit, although that could also be a video of its own. So there's a couple things to understand about the way chat works in Pokemon Mo. So you're going to be given a couple default chat pages which i believe are like trade whisper battle team and global the social ones my own i'm pretty sure although i could be wrong um i think these are all default though maybe whispers isn't default but i know battle and like trade and global are at least maybe team not, not even be default but they're basically some ch default chat uh windows they're going to give you and when it, basically what matters is Whenever you're in a chat window, you're going to be seeing the chats in that chat window that you've designated to see. So you're going to have these chat tab settings, and each tab is going to have a different setting. You're going to only be able to see the chats you allow in that tab. And then, But being in that tab doesn't mean you're talking in that tab. So that's a really important thing to understand. The most important thing to understand with Pokemon Mode chatting is that what chat you're talking in is here on the bottom left and not it's not decided by what tab you're looking at. It's decided by what tab is said here at the bottom left. That is super, super important. And I make I need to make that's the biggest thing I want to make clear about Pokemon Mode chats. Okay, and then back to the chat UI. So clicking this little flag is just gonna bring up that language chat box and the setting that's the settings that we've already covered. Clicking this is gonna bring up all the chat tab settings, which we've mostly covered. Clicking you're basically just gonna select what chat chat types you want to see per tab pretty simple go ahead and go through all of that uh we can go through sound notifications this is also going to bring up some notification sounds the main one being here is your whisper sound like whether you want that huge ding to play um whenever you get whispered by someone i think it's very important i like having that whisper ding uh you can turn that off though if it's too annoying to you and then two of the most probably the two most important buttons on the chat tab are this which kind of unlocks the chat UI, which makes you be able to stretch it and move it and make it however big or however small you want the chat box. You can also grab it diagonally, I believe. Maybe not. I'm not sure. I think it used to. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you can go ahead and drag the chat, however, whatever size you want it to be, and then go ahead and lock it when you're done. You can also do this. Click this down arrow, which go ahead and collapses the chat box, which is super important when you're trying to record a YouTube video. So go ahead and click that down arrow drop the chat and then click the little speech bubbles to reopen the chat box. But I believe that covers the chat box and I believe that covers everything I wanted to cover about Pokey MMO UI. That was a ton. That was so much more information than I expected. It really, you know, kind of blew my mind. But anyways, please like this video if you liked it. I actually put a lot more work in this video than I thought I was going to. Please dislike it if you disliked it. Please leave feedback, comments, questions, tons of questions please spam me with them in the, in the comments i love answering questions on youtube as fast as i possibly can i check it a lot on mobile mobile to make sure i'm you know i'm answering questions as best and fast as i possibly can i just want to help people and make sure there's enough information about this game as possible it's a great game and it's very under reported on and under you know there's not enough content creators for it but anyways hit that subscribe button if you want to see more pokemon content two uploads daily at the moment is the schedule Go ahead and hit the bell, ring the bell, ring the notifications if you want to get a notification when every single new video is uploaded. And I just hope this was worth your time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were entertained. I hope you learned something. And have a great day. Peace and love from Petrowski.